Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. We just knocked out an episode of RPT. Make sure you go check that out. Um, shit, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. I am your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. Dude, after we do something as intense as that episode, you feel like you got to like... <sighs> your brain, my brain was sweating. This Chingo Chats tends to kind of be, I just realized this today. I think it's almost like a, like when you're on set... And you finish and you rap, you have the rap party. The Chingo Chats are kind of like a rap party for like every episode. Like you got the adrenaline pumping. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Speaking of being backstage and being on stage, uh, Legalized Freedom Tour, get your tickets now, chingobleeding.com. We set it off in Raleigh, North Carolina, February 27th. McAllen, Texas, up next after that, March 5th. Naples, Florida, March 16th through the 17th. West Palm Beach, April 3rd. Tacoma, April 7th. Get your tickets, chingobean.com. I mean, I can go on and on. Nashville, Corpus Christi, Arlington, New Braunfels, Abilene, Lubbock, San Angelo, Odessa, Austin, Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison, and so much more. Chingobean.com. Por favor, believe. And shout out yet again to the Poppin' Ass Discord, which buys up tickets early, which gets merch early, which supports the podcast to the nth degree. We thank you. They're having a big discussion in there about economics. I saw that. You, uh, I posted the video, too, that you asked for the uh, when Chris, Chris Irons explained the Austrian versus um, Keynesian school of yeah. economics. Yeah, we're having a discussion on there about economics. I mean, we're on there losing weight. You know what I'm saying? We're like we're like um, a winning team there you on, go. on the Chingo Chats. You know, the Thea, the Tamale Intelligence Agency. The all Mamalo about the mindset. Mamalo mindset. All about being better than you were yesterday just you know challenging yourself holding yourself accountable uh we went to church sunday had a good time with the kids uh went and had lunch after with um my uh, sister-in-law and my mother-in-law uh took my youngest two daughters to go visit my sister out in Pearland. so it was a great weekend i've uh, i've accomplished our first goal for the first challenge if you guys haven't been participating or aren't on the uh, chingo chats tier 10 pounds was the first challenge. You knocked uh, it out. I you got it, it done. Out. Got it done already. I'm going to keep at it, obviously. And then we're going to build upon this and start the second one. We're not going to say exactly what it is yet or when it starts. But Rob, Rob just drinking a whole bunch of Metamucil. That's all he's doing. Dude. Oh, he, funny you say that. <laughs> what funny happened? you say that. Last night, I don't know why. He's I, like, you caught me. Dude, last night I was laying there and it was three in the morning. And all of a sudden, I just wake up like bright eyed. I'm like, oh, something doesn't feel right. And my stomach was making noises that I've never heard. Whoa, what did you eat? Nothing out of the ordinary, right? What did you drink? I uh, just uh, had one cup of whiskey last night, but that's, again, not really out of the ordinary. Just one shot over ice, you know. Sipped on it, went to bed, and, dude, it it wasn't, it was all it was was the severest case of gas I've ever had in my life. A la madre. Bro, I had to go sleep. I had to go uh, lay on the couch. Don was like, you okay? Wait, did you didn't eat them cookies that Marisol made, did you? I did. Why? They might have done it. Did he do that avenue too? No, but she about to make uh she's about to make a new batch and uh she could she was on HEB.com buying ingredients and food. She couldn't find milled flaxseed. Okay. Which like ground up flaxseed, right? So she's like, man, the only thing that that's similar is this nopalinasa, nopalina, whatever, which is ground flaxseed and nopal, you know, cactus. Oh my god. Right? Okay. And I looked at it. I was like, man, I kind of need to see the ingredients. I was like, but I was like, so how much ground flaxseed does it call for to make your lactation cookie? She's like, ah, I think it's just like three tablespoons. I'm like, all right, you, you should be okay. And then the, I go pick up the groceries uh, curbside yesterday. And then I read the package. And it even said, I think, senna leaf, which is kind of like a laxative in a way. In a way or it's like fiber. Uh-huh. It's all very fibrous. I mean, Mother fuck. But these are the new ones. You haven't had these. Oh, okay. No, these no. are the new ones. We just got last night at freaking 9 p.m. I was able to pick up groceries. Why so late? Just time? Just, yes. Like um, her being so busy to where she finally sat down to order them yesterday, like afternoon or morning. No, the ones I had were the ones that she made, I guess, the day before yesterday where she forgot to add... Um, what did she forget to do? She forgot to add something or... Basically, she, yeah, she put in... She made batter. Yeah. Her and Penny made batter, but she forgot to add the flour. Yeah. So it was mainly oats and chocolate and some other stuff. She put them in the oven and she's like, oh, these are not looking right. And she's like, bandeja, I forgot to put the flour. <laughs> so she's like, what do I do? So she, I was like, I don't know, remix it. Add it to the, uh, the proper batter. 
So, I mean, they're good. They were still good. I thought they were so good. They're good, but, you know, they're so healthy. They'll, they'll give you a little gas bubble. Dude, regardless, I, I got up twice thinking I needed to use the restroom, <laughs> and I came back to bed, and because I didn't. I just kind of, like, had some gas, lay down. The You're like, weight loss challenge is over. Dude, I felt miserable. So, the third time, I, I just got up, and I was like, I'm going to go lay on the, uh, on the couch. She was like, okay, I hope you feel better. And I just laid there, and for the next hour, I was just like, I was just kind of tossing and turning. <laughs> on the yeah, dude, just blowing. <laughs> I fucking blew a hole in my boxers. It was so bad. That, that couch ain't no good no more. Dude, you got to get a new one. You got to burn it and get a new one. Damn, son. And then you, I finally. was out there flatulent <laughs> like, a, like, like cattle. I finally fell asleep at 4 and then woke up at 6, 30. It was miserable. Wow, bro. But I'm still going hard now. You got to pay attention to what the hell you ate. That was different. Yeah, sometimes it's just, you know. You just did a whole bunch of kale. Ah, oh. you just had a big old salad or something. Man, might have been, had to have been something. But you know when you like mix beans. up beans, beans will definitely do it. Did you do beans? I what didn't do yesterday. But you know when you like you start eating like if if you're trying like if you're on a goal like this, you're gonna mix up what you eat regularly, right or no? Like you'll why, be more, why you pointing my orange? Well, bro. because it's like it's so strange for you to have an orange back here. I don't know, like motherfucker pointed at my. You know, like when you switch it up and you eating different shit, you point right at yeah, my. Yeah, usually you're like you know you're chowing down on a tamal or something. And then you come back here with an orange. It's a little tangible. What is it, mandarinas or something? Mandari- mandilones. Mandilones. So you go from eating a tamal to an a orange, you know, and just kind of your body's like, well, what do I do with this? And it's just like fruit and it's like fiber. And then you it's start, like fruit. It's exactly what it is. Shout out to. Uh... Okay, this one's mine, right? You have yeah, yours? I got mine. Total Nutrition. I stopped by yesterday and picked up some creatine, but I got to go back again today. Shout out to Total Nutrition. It's a cool shirt. I like it. If y'all want to sponsor the podcast, holla at your boy. Yeah. I might have somebody we can contact directly there, too. Well, the owner's real chill. He's always, like, saying what's up. He's oh, like, hey, cool. man, I don't know if he knows <coughs> who I am mm. or what I do. <coughs> who I, <coughs> I am. I don't know if he Googled me and shit, peeped the resume, the highlight reel. I don't know if he, he knows I get y'all cult classics. Go on and check the resume. Go on and check the resume. I'm from a small town. <laughs> Boy, y'all couldn't cancel them hits. Um, but anyway, the owner was was real chill, man. He he's real knowledgeable and how he explains everything. But yeah, I picked up some creatine, so be on the lookout for more gains. And then um, I need to go back and get some more ZMAs because I didn't realize I was out. Cause I, I buy them holes by the two. How many do you take a night? Two pills a night. Oh, okay. Yeah, what'd you think? What you? Oh, I don't know. Dang, I judgmental. Like, damn. Well, damn. I'm like, you run out of that more than anything else. I, I never hear I'm getting protein or I'm getting. PCAAs or no, don't you don't like function with the P, the pre and no, I don't do none of that. You're not cracked out like Juan. Oh no, no, Juan does the pre workout. I'm I do so much caffeine as it is. That's true. You do, we drink a lot of coffee. I mean, even this has a yerba mate in it. This water, I put the little tea bag in there just so it's not plain Jane ass. Hey man, city you don't water. have to make everything a Spanish word, okay? Yerba mate. Pues de, de, de donde es entonces, Wayne? It's herba mate. Herba? It's herba. Y- yerba. You're lying. Yerba mate. It's, you're lying. It's yerba mate. Yerba? Yerba mate. You're, you're lying, right? No, I'm not. You're saying it like that on purpose. No, it's yerba mate. Where is it from? Uh, I'm not 100%, but I know it's yerba mate. It's from South America. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. You're right. Why was, would it be yerba? It is yerba mate. Google it. Fuck Google. Duck, duck, go. go duck, duck, go doesn't pull have up, the... Pull up the Brave browser. They don't, they don't have the microphone where it says the word for you, so you're going to have to take my word for okay. it because I'm a trustworthy news source. I All think right. you're the brown face of white supremacy right now. In 2022, I am the way you saying a it. trustworthy news source. I'm triggered. I'm triggered right now. Yerba Mate. My, my global, the way I view the world, my filter is it's Yerba. Because this is coming from marginalized groups in South America. But who popularizes? That's what matters. The indigenous people who had their land plummeted, pummeled, pillaged, and plummeted. I'm about to get my uh, Al Sharpton on. By imperialism. By white people, imperialists, raping and pillaging the natural resources of the Yerba Mate. Yeah, so it's Yerba Mate, just so it's, you know. It's Yerba. It's Yerba Mate. Yes, sir. Uh, so, yeah, man, we're we trying to get on it. Um, Weigh-in this Friday. Final weigh-in is the Friday after this one. So um, I should be on track. I'm going to crank up the heat. Uh, I had to give Rob props yesterday. I was like, bro, what kind of cardio are you doing? You came in here with your face sunk in. As soon as Rob left, I told my wife, I said, man, I think Rob went and had work done. <laughs> Rob went and got lipo and the chin implant. 
I really, I cut it. I took a shit load off my beard though too, so that helped. Because um, as I dropped the ten, I was like, let me drop like ten up here too. Okay. So I'm like really. So really, yeah, I never really contrast too well on the screen. So that's why Rob. See, that's how you know. That's how you know you're getting gains because you start to think in terms of like, does my new silhouette yes match? Does my beard match the flow? That's it. Of the lines, mm -hmm. of the symmetry, yeah, of my body. And you actually, he Chingo did hit me up later. He's like, hey, what kind of cardio are you doing right now? And I was like, so what the fuck are you doing, bro? You holding out? So yes, yes I am. Uh, why are you not? Why on a Discord all of a sudden? You don't want to share what kind of cardio you do. That's doing. not true. At the beginning, I said, if anybody needs programs, I got programs I can help you with. And I may or may not have responded to some of those people. But everyone's, uh, it feels like most of the people in there have gone from out of shape to in shape at one time in their lives. And now, like, they're back into the, I want to get back into better shape, which is great. So everybody has a different philosophy about it. You actually have a trainer where you go work out a couple times a week. And then on your off days, what do you typically do? So I have jujitsu tonight. Oh, it's so, Tuesday, right? So there was no trainer today. Uh, typically, the trainer has been Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I'll do like jujitsu on Tuesday. Usually on Thursdays, I might be in a studio or something like that. Um, but I'll try to like, let's say if it's a day where we don't have the trainer and it's not jujitsu, I'll try to do like some hit. Like, um, like the other day I went to the gym. Well, I had to go to three gyms. Why? Because I dropped my daughters off and my sisters in Pearland. So then I was trying to go to 45 Almeida, 24 hour fitness. As soon as I get on the dip machine, right, I wanted to warm up with some pull-ups and some dips before I went and did some other stuff. And um, they're like, oh, sorry, welcome to 24 hour fitness. I mean, we're going to shut down, water, no water, sanitary purposes. And I just, me se pendejo. I was like, I don't know what the fuck she said. I'm, I don't need no water. I'm on this dip machine. This ain't no fountain. And she's like, sir, we're closing. So anyway, emergency shutdown. So they had a pipe break in the middle of the night? Nah, I don't know what I don't know what it was to be honest, but they That's their true. restrooms are always nasty anyway, so I don't know what the fuck. Anyway, they weren't they weren't you know counting ballots in there. They might have been. Yeah, I know what you I know I know what you're saying oh, okay. now. Okay. Now I know what you're saying. <laughs> you you didn't have drop boxes for voter uh, for voter rights. They didn't have two thousand mules. They have posters of Lena up there somewhere. You know what I'm saying? They didn't bust out the ballots from up <laughs> under the table. Anyway, um, so you just left. Well, I had to. They, they, they shut they the kick, whole gym down? They shut the whole gym down for sanitary purposes. You're not going to be able to wash your hands and so on. So they had to, right? So now I'm like, all right, bet. Let me go to Facet 7 in Edo. Who washes their hands at the gym? Keep going. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Heathen. So then I get to Facet 7. Boom, that shit's closed. It, I guess on Sundays they close kind of early. So the like, gym that you go to multiple times a week? It closes early on Sundays. <laughs> you didn't know what time it closed on Sundays? I don't go on Sundays normally. Okay. No, why should I have the whole... Thing memorized because you go four or five days a week but not on sundays i don't know that they that i missed it by 30 minutes they, oh, okay. they had just shut down guess what we'll let us rob learn. is very judgmental y'all he's <laughs> very judgmental he wants to make everybody think the way he does <laughs> and memorize gym schedules so then i go to 24 on elgin louisiana miraculously they were open so then i did a variety of shit bro i hit a little bit of abs jump rope um uh sprints sprints on an incline on an interval where you set your app and you might sprint for like 25 seconds and then rest 15 or whatever. That is one of the best feelings in the world because you get the, the pump in your legs, you get that tension from the incline and just from like, it's almost like a cardio high because mm -hmm. you're having, you're just fucking gasping for breath. But then, but then there's that break in between and then you hop back on and I kept like, trying to see how fast I could go, how much incline I could take. And uh, it was such a good feeling. I just felt like, you know, just like I had, um, it's almost like you take a vehicle, like an old Porsche, like an old muscle car. Ooh, now we're talking. From the 70s. <laughs> and you just got to like run it around the track a little bit. Yeah. And you just bumping off some rust and you getting them pistons going and you getting that oil flowing. And I don't know shit about cars, but that's how the fuck I felt. Yeah, go deeper, go. Keep that's going. how I felt. I felt like one of them... Uh, What's some uh, what's some uh, cars that the one that offset crashed in? Where you need a special key. It's like Bugatti? the Charger no. RT. Oh, the uh, the Hellcat. Hellcat. I felt like a Hellcat almost, mm -hmm. like a little bait, like a little Charger, like a little Challenger, like a Magnum. I felt like a Dodge Magnum that thought he was a Hellcat. Magnums are dope back in the day. Back in the day, the little station wagon. Yeah, I love wagons, dude. Love a little station wagon. Hell yeah! Did you grow up in a station wagon? Uh, no. Mm -mm. Nope. Well, what did my parents have? My dad have like he'd always have like a pickup. We had Did like you ever a, have a van. 
Mm, nah, we never had a van. Damn. Yeah, Lincoln Town Car, like little, little shit like that. Little Ford, four door, big body. Okay. I f- for sure, I thought you'd had an Astro van or something. Mm-mm. No, the neighbors <laughs> did. So back to, to what I was going to say. What well, Now that we're, we're five, this is week, uh, this will be week six. Next mm-hmm. week's week seven of our challenge, I believe, something like that. Um, you know, the philosophy that a lot of trainers, there's a lot of different philosophies for different trainers that you follow on Instagram or that you've read about or that you followed somewhere on YouTube. One of the things that I, that I took away from a, a group of trainers was that if, you, if you've got like a goal, let's say you've got a four, eight, 12-week goal, whatever. Let's say it's a prep for a competition, like Mighty Soul is prepping for a show. Or say you were prepping for your first show. You wouldn't want to throw the kitchen sink at yourself the first week or the first two weeks or even the first month because then you don't have room to make incremental small uh, adjustments, right? Mm-hmm. So if we all started cutting our calories severely, working out with strength training every day and doing cardio every day, you, you would hit a wall at like week four or five and then you would have nowhere else to go because you've cut all the calories, you're doing all the work, your body's like, all right, this is where we're at. So I didn't do much at cardio for the first month, I think, and then I just started reintroducing it. Because you want to like, and here's the phrase that really stuck with me, is you want to try to do the least amount of work to elicit the greatest amount of change. So if you just kind of dissect that, it's like, how little can I actually do? How many, how little calories can I actually reduce to make the change that I want so that I'm not starving, I'm not overworked, I'm not super tired and fatigued. And that's kind of where it's, it's at for me. So when you do, you, you sent me your cardio regimen, you said elliptical you put the resistance at five, and then every five minutes, you up it a By notch. one. And then if I do half an hour, then I end up at like 10, which is pretty intense. But the incline at zero, just leave it alone. So you leave it flat, no incline. Yeah. Um, how, how do I... What's and that? I do just do steady state. Like, I'm not sprinting on it or anything. Steady state. Yeah, so I'm just like slow jog. Not slow jog. Yeah, but basically like a jog. Just like a steady pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was my question. Like, basically, you're not really huffing and puffing. You're not really winded, maybe towards the end only? You definitely are. Or halfway there, you're already huffing. Yeah, huffing? for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, so five is the is the resistance. Yeah. Not it. I thought resistance was incline. No, the incline is like up or down. The resistance is how hard it is for you to push the pedals. Mm. It's almost like the speed of the machine in a way. Well, just how just how much uh, friction there is on the pedal. Like if we push it, you know, it gets harder. Oh, like with a mountain okay, bike, okay, you turn okay. the gears yeah, up, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. real hard to get up there. Yeah. So you start at five, which is like for some people, you might need to start lower, like because a lot of people don't mess with the the resistance. They always just go up and down on the inclines. So if you kind of up the resistance, make your quads work harder, your legs work harder, and then you have the the ellipticals that are sta- uh, stationary or the ones that have the whole arm thing too. Which is an added plus. What do you, you do? Have. The arm thing? That's the only kind of have at the gym okay. I go to. So yeah, I use it. But you don't have to. You could use the middle bar and not use your arms, or you, you know, because it does get tiring. Because then you go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you're like, you're really working, and you're trying to maintain the same amount of speed throughout the whole half hour, you know, of the cardio when it gets lighter and when it gets heavier. So you're really pumping at the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. So Rob gave us the cheat code. As, as y'all see, I had to cajole it out of him. He didn't just uh, produce that information off off rip. Hey, man, I, everybody in Discord, they're, they're bright, so they got their own ideas going on there. I don't want to be yeah. Mr. Like, hey, do this. Yeah, you must do this. Orale. But also, do this. But also, you got to do this. Yeah. But also, if you want results. We're going to kick you out the server if you don't. Yeah. So, yeah, man, congrats to everybody that's um figuring it out, making adjustments. We've collectively lost over 100 pounds. Yep. See? If y'all were on a winning team, if y'all were over here on the Patreon and in the Discord, you'd already have some self-improvement. Yeah. But some of y'all don't like that. And this is only the beginning of the year. Granted, we're uh, halfway through February at this point, which is pretty crazy to believe. Yeah. So you have some people who um, kind of like had a New Year's resolution, kind of had a vague idea of some type of a vision board, or I'm going to cut this, or I'm going to do more of that, or I'm going to try to be more like this. I guarantee you half of them people have lost sight. Of oh, that. yeah. Because you're not measuring, you're not managing, you're just like a rudderless ship in the ocean with no direction, no support system, you know what I mean? No feedback. You're not measuring. You're not managing. So you're just like getting thrown around by life. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like life's happening. Oh, I got to, man, I got to pick that kid up. I got to take this one to dance. This one got football practice. I got to make dinner. We got to, okay, can you go get the groceries? And all the while, inflation's going up. The cost of goods is going up. Supplies, you know what I mean, are low. As a great philosopher once said, el que no prepara, pierde. I uh, see. El Mamao. That's correct. El Mamao's on hiatus, but I heard he's making a comeback. We're going to see what El Mamao has been up to. We're going to see where has he been. I heard he got depressed. He got obese. 
Oh, he, oh, he must have broken up with this girl. Yeah, he, he, una toxica, way. Ooh, la toxica. He's getting his shit back together. Oh, he could have Some of y'all got toxicas in y'all's life, and <laughs> for real, man, <laughs> like, t- like that sounded direct. Like I you're mean, thinking of somebody while you say that. I mean, no, that. I mean, think about it. Like, if you have, you already are up against things. You're up against genetics, trauma. You're up against life. You're up against this illegitimate regime, put, <laughs> putting inflation all up in your grill. You have all this. You know, there's a currency war happening. All this stuff out of your control. You know, there's GMO in the food. They hiding soy and everything. Um, the FDA, they thinking they got the food pyramid all fucked up. So you're already up against a lot. And if you got, you carrying around dead weight, like you just, you know what I mean? You can't be in a relationship with somebody who's not ready to like, what's the word, man? Just have just have a positive mindset. Trying to elevate with you. Yeah, they don't encourage you. They don't support you. They're just adding to your stress, adding to your drama. You don't need that in your life. Not at all, man. Not at all. So if this was the, yeah, if this was the message you've been waiting on. <laughs> if this is the message that you need to break up or divorce your wife, this is it right here. That's fucked up. Now, divorce, that's a fucked up thing, man. Um, you know, a lot of times the kids suffer. Sometimes, they, hey, ain't no way around it. Sometimes you just got yourself in a... <laughs> You just got yourself in a situation where it's like I'd rather be, I'd rather be broke, anything else but miserable with you, dude. Uh, Chris, so funny enough, Chris Stefano gave you a funny shout out on Bad Friends. He's co-hosting with Andrew or uh, yeah, with uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Andrew Santino while Bobby Lee's out. He was on Theo's podcast a couple of days ago, and you, I was expecting, and it was super silly and funny. But a lot of it was like talking about like love and relationships and parents, parenting and all this. And it was just funny, man. Like Chris Stefano is a wild man. And like I'd never heard the story of how he got with Jasmine, his now not wife, but baby mama kind of thing. And it's funny, man. But sometimes you just got to you just got to go for it. Like if you're a parent and you want to stick with the, your, your baby mama, as they say. So they're together. They're together now. Yeah. But they're not like married. So his thing was like. We have to stay together for our, for my daughter, like no matter what. And he tells some crazy stories on there, so like drama, straight drama. But it's funny, like he makes it really funny, and the whole story is just insane. Yeah, man, boy, I thank God for Mighty Soul every day, boy. I know I sound like a Monday loan, <laughs> but like, it's almost like, um, it's almost like I had. To, obviously, you know, we we never stop improving. Yeah, but it's one of those things where it's like I was the drama. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. rob's like yeah i totally see that like like in other words it's like she kind of had her shit together pretty good you know what i mean and sometimes especially when you're like a single dad you know what i mean a single male whatever you got a kid and you're trying to like get your career going you're trying to maintain this you're trying to juggle that you're trying to be responsible and you got to figure out how to like cook the meals for your kid and you you can't just be happy meals all the time and you're trying to figure out what dvd to pop in the tv and you know when you do have a good woman that's you know supportive and just positive and like we're on the same wavelength in terms of uh you know being entrepreneurs and the vision that we have for our kids the kind of world we want to raise our kids in um kind of like the the lifestyle and the doctrine like dude we went to um like I mentioned, we went to Second Baptist Church and it was like video day where they, you know, after the music and stuff, they played like this really well produced, almost like a little mini documentary, like testimonial of different members of the church and what they were going through, um, how they how they stumbled into that church, who invited them, like the loss they were going through, what brought them to Texas. You know, what I mean, like just different stories. This one lady was from China uh, she was raised Buddhist, and all of a sudden, she's, like, crying, listening to these people singing. You had a Chinese defector there? Uh, I don't know if defector, if she identifies as a defector or whatever, but she, I guess, used to be Chinese. And she kind of did subtly, of course, I was looking for it, because she subtly was like, she was like, um, you know, here in America, I saw how, like, people live and how they're able to express themselves, what they're able to say, you know, how they're able to live, mm. and it was just... And, you know, kept an open mind and went to visit this church nearby and I fell in love, blah, blah, blah. And then they had a Hispanic couple up there and I'm just like, okay, uh, somebody needs to join the Patreon (laughs) and get on this Discord. Wow. Because it's like, I mean, I don't want to be judgmental like, oh my God, I think y'all are the fattest 
couple on this whole video. <laughs> like y'all look like y'all might have some health problems. Let's okay. keep it real. Like y'all might want to start managing steps and looking at what you eating. And sir, you may not, you may want to come to jujitsu. Like you got to get more active. You know what I mean? Might want to stop going to Golden Corral. Might want to stop voting for Biden. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, the unhealthy decisions are even his fault. Well, who's Biden. oh. What do you? Oh, okay. No, I'm, I thought you were talking about this this couple. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, the point the point I'm bringing up is, I'm very blessed and very happy with the fact that, you know, I found somebody, and I was never Mister Religious at all. I was yeah. never, I was never Mister. Oh, I'm gonna get up on Sunday and go to church at all. But when you got these little girls, you got these little daughters, and you're living in this crazy world, and you arrive at a place, I guess, spiritually, or internally, where you're, kind of feel like you're ready. You kind of want to know, like, okay, can, how do you read the Bible? What are all these? Who wrote all these different books? And what is it? Who are these characters? And what took place in this one? And what does that mean? Yay, thou. You know what I'm saying? What's the moral of this? What's Proverbs about? Who wrote this? Who wrote that? But going, I feel like it's a nice family ritual where it's like the girls got to get dolled up. They're going to get their little moños, their hair done. They put on cute little outfits, little dresses, and their nice little church shoes. And, and we grab our Bible and we load up in the, in the car and, and, um, you know, we go to second Baptist and they get to be around, you know, positive, like-minded people that, you know, stepping away from this crazy world. It's almost like finding refuge. It's like an oasis of hope when, as soon as you leave that mug, it's back to honking horns and road rage and crime and, you know, debauchery. You know what I'm saying? You got this crazy city. You got all this human trafficking going on next, you know, all around you. You know, people trapping in the school zone. Yeah, we're going to press snooze on that. Go on. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy to have that thought when you're leaving church, too. I was like, I'm thinking to myself, damn, that's what you're thinking about when you're leaving church? Like, you know. But no, it's crazy. I don't sit there and literally think I about know, that. I know, yeah, I know. Yeah. But it is like a crazy aspect of this big-ass city. Like, that is going on all day, 24-7, 365. And fortunately, we are not in that world. But at least we could do is talk about an RPT, try to open our eyes and shine some light on it and, you know, try to do as best as we can. That's what this whole challenge is about. That's what this whole, like, uh, a part of the show, I think, is about, is just bettering yourself. Yeah, because when you do better yourself, it's not so much about, like, what number's on the scale or how many greens you have in your fridge and, and all this type of stuff. It It's really more about like that feeling of self-improvement, like self-mastery, like dominating your food addiction. You know what I'm saying? Dominating that lazy voice in your head that's being a little bitch. That's like, it's cold outside, dog. Or you know what? Maybe maybe you should take a break from jujitsu. Like maybe you should rest that thing. Or You ever watch any C.T. Fletcher videos? I have in the past. Okay, yeah. There was yeah. one, like an old one. It was just so good. It, it, he has a way of uh, keeping it as the, the kind of real that I like. Is like, you know what I don't like? I don't like little bitches, you know? You look yourself in the mirror, and I'm just paraphrasing, but he's like, if you're a little bitch, step it the fuck up. Stop being, and that's that's how I talk to most of my friends. That's how I talk to most people that I know well enough to understand that I'm not going to coddle you. Like, if you ask me a question, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. Like, what, what favor am I doing you if I coddle you and, and sugarcoat shit? Yeah, and that, I think that's honorable of you because we live in a world where the balance of, like, I don't know what the word is, pragmatic, practical, realistic, preparedness, you know what I mean, getting up early, making, like, being curious, read the book, what book are you reading, you know what I'm saying, what is your diet, like, you have to be able to have an answer to some of this stuff, like, you know, what, how are you raising your kids, what's your philosophy on that, how do you feel about, you know, how do you vote? What do you believe in? Um, how do you, what's, what's your stance on gun control and abortion and all these things? But I'm kind of rambling right there, but uh, in terms of the coddling versus toughening up, I think there's been, um, what's the word? Uh, it, it's been painted in a bad light to, to be realistic and pragmatic and practical and to toughen up like this. Oh, it's become toxic machismo. It's become toxic masculinity. And it's, it's, it's a problematic and it's hate speech. And the, uh, it's violent those words are violent. You're honking your horn. It's racist. Like this weird postmodern soy boy shit serves nobody. Like 
putting the nerf on all the corners and coddling and we're getting rid of the F's and the D's and the school system and all that is just setting us up for failure. You know what I'm saying? Say it louder for the people in the back. It's setting us up for failure. Um, I mean, if you look at like the Russian military or any of these countries that are preparing, I mean, even people that are preparing, people that know what went down in the Soviet Union can happen here anywhere. Like communism can sneak in, especially especially where we are right now, like with the culture war and like our uh, higher educational system, how they're tricking the kids into thinking, to, you know, how to be woke and all this stuff and not teaching them how to think, but what to think. The media is assigning you an opinion. Uh, these health magazines got an obese woman on the front. They're saying this is the new face of health. Yeah. It's like upside down, bizarro world. Yeah. Everything is bizarro. What is up is down. It's like opposite day. And only only the real motherfuckers that really care are the ones that are going to have their kids like, hey, I don't give a damn. You got to learn to trade or like, son, do your push ups or we're going on a walk or or we're having a picnic or we're turning off the tablets. Yeah. Like just real shit of like we're not going to all go willy nilly, uh, you know, softly into the darkness and softly into the light. And we're all just going to join the metaverse and let Elon Musk put the neural link in the back of our head and go ahead and put a chip in there while you're at it. You know what I'm saying? Like stand up, ask questions like, you know, understand the beauty of what what makes America like just freedom and you know manning up, a hundred percent. Man the fuck up, bro. Hundred percent. You have an appointment to get to. This yes, has sir. been your Thursday half hour. You know, originally when the Thursday free episode started, guys, it was supposed to be a half hour show that just ended up inevitably being an hour every week because there's always so much to talk about. I'm not saying that every episode, every Thursday will be this, but I do recommend joining the Patreon so you can get all shows uh, on the higher tiers or the mid tier and uh, join the Discord because it's so fun in there. I forgot to mention that we want to do a, a fighters companion. I forgot to mention an RPT. But uh, we want to do a fighter's companion, really big fight, uh, Adesanya and uh, Whitaker and, and shit. Uh, your boy. Yeah, Derek Lewis. <laughs> yeah, I, last night I, uh, we were brainstorming about the uh, doing a fighter's companion. I was like, man, what? Maybe is there like a Houston comic or somebody could join us? And Mighty Soul's like, oh, I want to be there. You know, I'm down to whatever, whatever. And and I'm like, man, I should hit up Crew Bob. Maybe he, if he's free and he's not watching a fight, maybe. And I'm like, wait a minute, Derek Lewis is fighting. Yeah. He's going to be the corner he's be man. Corner, yeah. So you got Derek Lewis versus Tai Tuivasa. Yeah, it's exciting. That's going to be very exciting. Uh, so anyway, we want to do a fighter's companion. You'll probably stream it on YouTube, CBTV. Go find it there. And, uh, and then maybe in the future, UFC always got fights. In the future, we can do those ex- uh, exclusive for the patrons and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Have a great week. Uh, don't forget, join the Discord by going to patreon.com forward slash Red Pilt Miles. We're doing a weight loss challenge. We're on there roasting. I'm getting roasted mainly. But uh, it's going to be a great time, great week. You guys be safe. Talk to you soon.